purpose of this video is to show you how to construct a query using the query builder inside of Oracle Apex. So I am at my home page here and I am going to click on the SQL Workshop icon and then you'll see over here on the right hand side we have utilities and I'm going to click on the query builder. So once I do that, it brings me a screen up with all of the tables available to me in my schema that I can build a query from. And if I double click on, say, the passenger tab here, uh, just once, I then have uh, the table up here in our, in our UI and I can select the fields that I'd like to make a part of my query. And you can see as I check these off that it adds the fields down here where we can um, add conditions such as the sort order, the direction of the sort, whether or not we're uh, showing uh, the field. We could also add functions here such as uh, sum. You can do group buys and other things you might do in an aggregate uh, situation. Uh, and you can also put uh, where clauses in here. So. Another thing we do, if we look in the SQL panel right here, you can see the SQL that the application writes for you as you make your selections. So this is a very simple select statement off of the passenger tab table. And you can see it's just selecting the fields that we've chosen and uh, there are no where conditions here. So if I click on the results tab, it will actually run that query and you can see the four rows that we have present in this table. Now I could also select the uh, passenger ID here and then I can rerun my query and you can see that the passenger ID has been added into the query. Uh, also in this uh, I have the ability to save these queries off so I could call this my uh, passenger example query and uh, once I save that off it will be available to me here in this saved SQL panel and you can see right there is the passenger example that uh, I put in here. All right so now to give you a demonstration of a where clause let's say I wanted to limit this query to only passenger ID 1. So if I put an equals 1 in this condition right here and then I click on my results again you'll see now my query has been limited just to the passenger whose passenger ID is equal to one and now if we take a look at our SQL clause here we can see that it has put a where clause into our SQL statement of uh, passenger ID is equal to one. Now let's say I'm interested in doing a query that requires information from more than one table. Uh, I can perform join operations inside of, uh, of this interface as well. So I'm going to go ahead and select the cruise table to go with my passenger table here. And uh, I'm going to select the uh, all the fields from this table to be a part of our query and then what is um, particularly important is that we have a, a join condition between these tables. Now, for this particular table, there is no relationship between the cruise table and the passenger table, but there is a reservation table, which uh, does have a relationship with both of these tables. So now, if I were to, say, select the total cost of a reservation out of this table, I could join my cruise table by clicking over here and then clicking the field that I want to join to in the reservation table. So you can see it draws a line here and it has created a join condition. And if we look at our where clause now, we'll see that it has said uh, where the cruise ID from the cruise table is equal to the cruise ID from the reservation table. Uh, now, if I wanted to create a, a join between my passenger table and my reservation table, I would just go ahead and click the passenger ID over here and the passenger ID in my reservation table. And now you can see it has also added this into our where clause to create the join between our passenger and reservation table, setting the passenger ID 
in the passenger table equal to the passenger ID in the reservation table. Now, uh, maybe I want to clean this query up a little bit. Let's take a look at the results. You can see uh, it's given us the passenger name and other information from the passenger table. We've got some information from our uh, reservation table here with the total cost, and then we've obviously got some information from our cruise table as well, showing the, the ship name and cruise departure date. Uh, if I wanted to maybe not include all of these fields, I could always come back to the conditions. And uh, here I could choose to say turn off the cruise ID and passenger ID. And then if uh, we reran our SQL at that point, you can see that it's been uh, cut down. So this is a great tool for learning how to um, write some SQL because it uh, will sort of teach you the basics by constructing SQL statements for you. And I think once you get the hang of it, uh, then you can uh, begin to write your own SQL statements. Another great thing with this uh, is you can actually copy these statements out of here. And then if you were to go uh, back to your SQL workshop, you can go to your SQL commands tab, and then here we can actually paste that SQL statement uh, in here. And if we run this, we'll see that we get uh, results here as well. And uh, in this interface, you can go ahead and uh, write changes or um, you know write your own SQL statements. So that's the basics for how to create a, a query. Uh, inside of utilizing both the uh, query builder and also showing you how you can do this in the SQL commands area. So there's one other special case of a query I want to tell you about that you can't do inside of the query builder but can do inside of our SQL commands and that is the concept of a bind variable. And what a bind variable is is a uh, value that you will enter when you run your query uh, that you'll be prompted for uh, by the interface. And the way that we do this is instead of giving, say, an explicit um, value inside of our WHERE clause, we can actually, um, using the bind variable syntax, just give a named variable. So we'll just call this variable. And now when I run this statement, you'll see that the Apex interface prompts us for the value of this variable. And if I go ahead and say the passenger ID uh, should equal one by filling that in for our variable and submit, you'll see that uh, the um, bind variable is substituted in our WHERE clause and then the results are produced based on the value we give. So if we were to run this again, and this time we put in a value of two, you'll see that we get uh, a different result set based on the different number that we put in there. So that's the basics for how to write queries. I would encourage you to uh, play around both here in the, in the SQL commands and then also uh, from the SQL uh, command window, you can click this icon over here to go to your query builder interface. And I would uh, encourage you to play with both of these in order to get the hang of how to write queries.